know that feeling when you're on a really, really, really bad date? And while your date goes on about his ex-wife and his fear of dogs, all you can think of is, where's the emergency exit? That's how I felt the other day in a business meeting. My client asked me to have dinner. And while he spoke about astrological signs and something that Scorpios are very sensitive people, all I could think of was, let's hope he doesn't order dessert. This Tuesday, I had a huge keynote, a huge stage, and we had a technical check. I was about to put on my headset when my client approached me. She walked up to me and she said, I really don't know how to tell you this. Tell me what? Well, your pants. My pants are beautiful, my pants are pretty, I just bought them. What's your problem with my pants? It turned out that my pants had a huge hole in a very awkward spot. <laughs> And this was 10 minutes before I had to go on stage, so I panicked. Everybody was running around. One lady, she literally took off her pants. She gave them to me. <laughs> and when I was about to log into my iPad to present, my mind went blank. I didn't even remember the code anymore. These two things happened to me this very week. In one moment, I was extremely bored at this boring dinner. And in the other situation, I was so stressed to the point that my brain didn't work anymore. To me, these were just short moments, even though I must admit that the dinner felt very, very long. For other people, and for some people, all their life looks like this, right? Two-thirds of people report being stressed at work to the point where they can't sleep well anymore at night. And just as many people are disengaged and bored at their jobs. It doesn't have to be that way. Everybody can be happy at their jobs. And everybody can reach peak performance. All you need are three simple things. And I like to call them Fun, fear, and focus. Why should we have fun, fear, and focus at work? In order to understand that and how you can reach peak performance thanks to these three magical ingredients, let's take a look at how the brain works. So, here we have performance. Let me just fix this. Here we have performance, and it doesn't work. So my mind is going blank this very moment. But I will have to fix it, and I will fix it. OK, let's forget about it. So here's the thing. And I, you know, this wasn't pre-prepared. I'd do this without. So in some situations, we are so bored that our brain will not go into peak performance, because our brain is a lazy couch potato. It doesn't like to go into peak performance when you're sitting in a very boring meeting. It's just not going to happen. And in some situations, you're so stressed that your mind goes blank, right? And then you can't fully focus anymore. We need a certain level of stress in order to reach peak performance, but not too much and not too little. In order to reach peak performance, you need to have just the right mix of chemicals in your brain. When you reach peak performance, you're fully present here and now. You're losing the concept of time, and you love what you do. And that's when your brain releases a cocktail of neurochemicals in your brain that will put you into peak performance. So what does fun, fear, and focus have to do with that? Let's start with fun. When we're having fun at work, our brain releases a chemical called dopamine. And dopamine is a real brain booster. When your brain is high on dopamine, it's going to be faster, you're going to think faster, you're going to learn faster. Everything is going faster when you're high on dopamine. So dopamine is like a real brain booster. 
And I'm not speaking about the fun that you have after work, right? I'm speaking about having fun while you're at work. So the after work party is not going to fix that. So how can you have more fun at work? I have lots of girlfriends and they tell me that yoga changed their life. Okay, they tell me it calms my mind, I feel so centered, it improved my posture, it toned my legs. And I'm thinking, oh, hey, where can I sign up, right? So the other day, I went to a yoga class. These were the longest 60 minutes <laughs> of my life. I hated it. While we were doing these poses, all I could think of is, you know, when will it stop? And afterwards, my first thought was, can I do now a real workout to get rid of all of these stress hormones that I accumulated while doing yoga? <laughs> yoga just isn't my thing. Millions of women dream of becoming a yoga instructor. Not my personal dream. My daughter is six years old, and the other day I picked her up from school, and the other lady walks up to me, another mother, and she says, Oh, Benita, are you coming to Teo's birthday party this weekend? He's so excited. I'm awfully sorry, but I won't be able to attend. I have an appointment. <laughs> oh, an appointment. What are your plans? I have an appointment with my room. <laughs> For many kids, being invited to the birthday party is the highlight of their week. They think about candles and balloons and all the fun they're going to have. For my daughter, her biggest fun is after school going straight to her room so she can do arts and crafts. She's a little artist. She will spend hours in that room, and when she gets out, she always has made something. So fun is highly individual. Is anybody here who likes doing their taxes? <laughs> well, I see one lady over here. She raised her hands. Well, so does my tax advisor. I have noticed that when he calls me up for a missing receipt, there's true excitement in his voice. <laughs> So the other day, I asked him, Lutgar, do you like doing taxes? Is that your passion? And he said, of course. For me, doing taxes is like solving a huge puzzle. I put the pieces together, and in the end, I have a beautiful picture. <laughs> it doesn't stop there. Then he said, to me, doing my taxes is like playing chess. I make one movement, and then I already plan the next steps. I was amazed. But you know, this is how it works. If you never have fun at work, it's probably because you're in the wrong spot. You need to find your passion. You need to find a work that is in line with your talents, and then you will have fun every day. And fun is not just nice to have, because only when we're having fun will your brain release dopamine and that's the first ingredient we need for the cocktail that will put our brain into peak performance. The next factor is fear. When I speak about fear, I'm not saying you should have a toxic boss that yells at you and gives you negative feedback all the day, right? I'm not speaking about being so stressed at your work that you can't sleep well at night anymore. I'm speaking about being slightly over-challenged. Most people think that your best performance happens when your skill set is in line with the challenge. That's not true. Your best performance happens when your challenge is a little bit too big for you. Because that's when your brain will release a substance called noradrenaline. And noradrenaline is like a wake-up call for your brain. It tells your brain, wake up, this is important. You need to rise to the occasion, you need to live up to that challenge. And only then will your brain go up into peak performance. Do you know that feeling when you jump into a cold pool? 
or you just take a cold shower. It's a bit scary at first, but once you're in there, it gives you that burst of energy and that kick. That's the noradrenaline kicking in. And we need that in order to reach peak performance. But people have different sweet spots. Let me explain. The other day, my husband came home from work and he looked like he was in a really bad mood. So I said, honey, what's wrong? Everything went well today. <laughs> My husband is a sensation seeker. That's how scientists call people who, due to a mutation in the DRD4 receptor for dopamine, seek sensations. They need a lot of stuff going on in order to reach their peak performance. They need a constant change. They might even start a little fight with somebody at work just to get going. For me, probably, my technical setup failing today is perfect. That's just what I need to go into peak performance because I'm a sensation seeker myself. When journalists call me up for an interview, they will usually send me an email and say, we will send you the questions beforehand so that you can review them prior to the interview. Now we say, no, 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 no. Don't send me your questions. That's the worst thing you can do. If you send me the questions beforehand, we will have a very, very boring interview because I need that kick. I need to be kept on my toes. I need to have these unexpected questions where I need to give a spontaneous answer. Otherwise, I just go through the motions, but I will not reach peak performance in that interview. So some people are sensation seekers. They have a high stress point. They need a lot of challenges and changes in order to go at their best. What about the people who have a low stress point, who require very little stress to reach their peak performance? Many people will think that these are the bureaucrats, the slow ones, the inflexible ones, the stupid ones in an organization that just are not flexible enough. It couldn't be farther from the truth. Think about Nobel Prize winning scientists who work on one molecule for 20 years and find the cure for cancer. Think about Pulitzer Prize winning authors who write and rewrite and edit and re-edit a book until it's perfect. Imagine you were going to have surgery tomorrow. Would you take the surgeon who loves to experiment and is a bit adventurous and loves to try out new things? Or would you rather take the guy who has performed this very surgery many, many times and who will do it the exact same way tomorrow? Who wants the crazy surgeon? <laughs> no one, right? So people have different stress points. Not everybody likes the same kind of work environment. But we all need to be slightly over-challenged. You need to find out what that means to you, right? If you feel slightly overchallenged, if you get that little kick where you feel that your nervousness is helping your performance, then you're in the right spot. That's where you need to be. Finally, focus. That's the third ingredient we need for our neurochemical cocktail for peak performance. Imagine Serena Williams at the Wimbledon finals holding her racket and about to hit the ball. And then she says, hold on a minute, I just really need to take that call. Yes, we need pickles, we need... Yeah. Her fans would be shocked. Yet, in the business world, people behave like this all the time. People have open plan offices, people have open door policies, and people multitask all the time. And when people multitask, they make 50% more mistakes and they take 50% longer to complete the task. That's insane. Our brain needs to be focused in order to reach peak performance because that's when a magical ingredient will be released and its name is acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is like a highlight, like a spotlight. It will highlight your most important ideas 
and everything else remains in the dark. It gives you that laser-like focus. Unless you're fully focused, you're not going to reach peak performance. So the question is, how can we learn to focus at work? Many people will tell you, maybe you should try some yoga, or do a mindfulness meditation. You can do that, but I have a much easier solution for you guys. You can hack your brain for immediate focus. And here's how it goes. Let me explain. The other day, I worked with a group of top executives. We were sitting in this boring conference room. Everybody thought that this was going to be a day looking at slides and falling asleep. A guy walked in like this, and he had a huge bag on his shoulders. He put down the bag, he took out an empty bottle of wine, and he smashed it on the floor like this. He took out another wine bottle, Boom, 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 boom. He smashed all of the wine bottles until the floor was covered in pieces of broken glass. Everybody was a bit like this, right? Who's that guy? And then he said, take off your shoes, take off your socks, let's walk all over it. That's what we did. Do you think that anybody was texting while walking over the broken glass? <laughs> Do you think that people were checking their Instagram stories? Do you think I was sitting there telling people, please focus on the broken glass? Of course not. Here's the thing. When we have the right level of fun and the dopamine kicks in, and people were having fun in this situation. And when we have the right level of fear, and the noradrenaline kicks in, focus will follow naturally. So, if you find yourself having trouble to focus at work or anywhere else, the problem is not the focus. It's just the symptom, not the disease. What you need to be thinking is, Am I having the right level of fun? Am I having the right level of fear? And once you find those, and once you find the right level of fun and the right level of fear, focus will follow naturally.